everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kendall Kronstrom, the editorial director of NYCNG, a proud sponsor of the Winter Show. And we're really thrilled and thankful to have our panelists with us today, starting with Carol Thibault Pomerantz, who is a scholar, art historian, and dealer specializing in vintage wall coverings from the 18th century to the 1950s, as well as the 20th century decorative arts. She is the author of an award-winning definitive book on historic wallpapers and divides her time between New York and Paris, where she joins us today. Benoit Drut is the principal of the New York-based antiques gallery Maison Gerard, where he joined his partner 22 years ago. During his tenure, he helped expand the gallery's focus on French art deco furnishings to include contemporary pieces by such artisans as Hervé van der Straten, Achille Silvani, and Matthew Solomon, in addition to mounting exhibitions of work by artists and designers such as Fernando Mestrangelo and Carol Egan. Matthew Patrick Smythe is an acclaimed New York-based designer known for his signature elegance and projects ranging from New York and Connecticut to Paris, Palm Beach, Aspen, and Geneva. He is a five-time participant in the Kips Bay Decorator Showhouse and also designed a room for NYCNG's Ronald McDonald House of Long Island. Additionally, he is the author of two books and has created product lines for Patterson, Flynn, Martin, and Schumacher. He's a longtime fan and patron of The Winter Show. Well, our, our theme today is loosely based around garden and nature motifs and antiques. But before we get into that, I think we all want to know what your experience has been like with a virtual winter show. Matthew, starting with you as a decorator who has walked the show for so many years, how has the experience been different for you? Well, you know, at, at first when I when I clicked on, I thought, you know, I'm not sure this is going to work for me. But as I got into it, I felt that it was um, probably more rewarding in a sense that, I mean, I would love to do the combination of both, but mm -hmm. seeing things online, I got into to, to um, dealers that I wasn't that familiar with and, and may have skipped over if it was at the show. You know, you go to opening night, it's busy, you talk to people and then you go back with clients and you're focused on what their needs are. So this gave me a chance to, you know, like jewelry, I, I never have time to look at jewelry at the show. So I, I was able to go into and, and find, you know, beautiful things that, you know, usually is not part of what I'm interested in, but it gave me a chance to explore and, um, and also get the history of what the pieces were and, um, and the shame is, you know, I will go back. I will visit some of these dealers at some point and look at everything in person. But, um, you know, it was, it, I thought it was much more interesting. I, I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. And I just, you know, one piece led to another piece and um, it, it worked very well for me. Any drawbacks to not having the, the opening night hoo-ha and that sort of thing? No, you know, I mean, that's always fun. It's always nice to see everybody. It's like, it's like the beginning of the season. But it was, um, what's, what's nice about this is that, um, you know, like I said, I got more familiar with dealers. And the good thing about the, especially the winter show, what I love about it is that you know what you see is what you get, that it's perfectly um, been vetted. It's described yeah. wonderfully that you can trust the dealer that you're dealing with. And um, and that it's what you see, you, is, is it gonna be exactly the same as you see it or is it gonna be better? And um, that's what I love about that show. Mm -hmm. so, so this was fine. This was, you know, for, for, considering what we have to do, it was I, I enjoyed it. Great, and, and as dealers, Benoit and Carol, how has the show played out differently for you? Just even in terms of setting up your, your virtual booths and that sort of thing. Um, it's interesting, an interesting experience. It has already exposed me to some people and contacts already. Um, so, I mean, it's get the, the information is getting out there and I've got, some compliments of people saying how the booth looks wonderful and all. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a new experience. And probably like Matthew said, it it brings something else, another element or dimension that we wouldn't have in these, you know, uh, these normal shows, mm -hmm. which where uh, indeed I agree with Matthew, unfortunately, a lot of energy and concentration gets us uh, gets lost. So um, we usually like to see people come back after the opening, but they don't always have the time or, you know, uh, and, and so you miss out sometimes, right. but so nothing is perfect. This is a new experience. I think Helen has handled it very well. And all of the various announcements and all are, are very attractive. So apparently it's um, enticed people to, to look in, to visit. 
And Benoit, how about you? I would. I was very sceptic, but um, knowing uh, that uh, Ellen and her team were uh, working so hard at it, I just follow. Uh, and but I felt off virtual, whatever. <laughs> and, uh, and over the weekend, uh, I kept being, at, you know, disturbed by a request of that client that we had not seen that, uh, like five years, for five years. A very good client that had purchased one of the best pieces we ever had. Uh, we had some interest by uh, a couple of museums. Uh, yeah, me too. So I am, I am really, really, really amazed and uh, delighted. I think it's been, it's the you know, knowing given the circumstances, I think uh, we could not, we could not uh, hope for better. Um, Carol, I was very impressed by your virtual sort of three D booth, um, <laughs> where every piece has some sort of floral decoration or motif from Joseph Dufour's 1818 Fet Grant Grease Eye panels to an early 19th century panel that you have pictured hanging above a fireplace. Um, but there is also a 1925 Art Deco woodblock print that was super groovy and really Pinterest ready, uh, felt very contemporary. Um, so it made me wonder about why people continue want to want to surround themselves with these garden and nature motifs. Well, I think, uh, well, it's true that in my field of specialty, the, the vintage wallpaper is a, a, lot, uh, a, lot, a lot of floral vegetation was in, in incorporated. And uh, I think the reason originally that this uh, mural art form was the art of trompe l'oeil. Mm -hmm. And it was to, um, to inspire people for a different and new environments that weren't reality. The, the vintage wallpapers were originally the art of trompe l'oeil. And so it, it, it was to suggest to people that they could bring indoors exterior envir um, environments or also sometimes imaginary landscapes. And so they came into a home, into um, an inner space, and it had the characteristic of opening up the inner space and giving you the illusion of a much larger volume. So that was one of the characteristics. It was like opening the window onto an imaginary landscape and your eye goes out. And so it creates a totally different um, sense of, of the environment and where the, you know, the term trompe comes in and it, it's very accurate in that sense, in that respect. So there was always uh, the, the inspiration of uh, floral and vegetation topics, et cetera. And, you know, different periods in the 18th century, they brought in a lot of floral elements. And then in the 19th century, it was the, it was the vogue and the fashion for uh, winter gardens. So all of this, it's always, there's always that element, even if you're dealing with a grisaille panel, which, which has no color but there is that, uh, that element. Mm -hmm. So um, that's how it sort of fits into your area, I think. If I may, you know, a few years ago, uh, in between show, uh, Carol uh, convinced me to, uh, to show a few of her wallpapers I at know. the gallery. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I first announced to my staff that uh, this is what we would be doing and we would be bringing this beautiful uh, vintage wallpaper from the late 18, early 19th century, uh, and we would mix it with um, our furniture, which is 20th and 21st century, everybody was quite doubtful of the result. Um, and, uh, but because I'm stubborn, uh, we went on and we displayed them. And uh, it was interesting to see during the, the, the course of the, of the show, how all of a sudden my staff was a little bit more listening to my conversation with clients and you know, my explanation about the story behind and, uh, and so on, and but it's really after when the wallpaper, uh, you know, some sold and uh, were delivered, and then some went back to to Carol, that uh, one of my heart handler uh, said to me, uh, you know, Benny, I really regret uh, not being surrounded by nature. Uh, it was like traveling in another world, and these were his words, and that's you know that that's when I realized that we had we had won. Is that uh, you know everybody did feel uh, something very special. 
Mm -hmm. And um, it was better than a, a flat screen TV between us. Uh, <laughs> and it's really, there is something very moving about those wallpaper, the, you know, the, 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 the coloration, the, it's, uh, it's quite, quite beautiful. Now, it was a wonderful opportunity to introduce them into the environments of Benoit's gallery, mm -hmm. because what I try to do in addition is to show people how you can incorporate them into contemporary homes. And that's very important. It's bringing in a new note to what's oftentimes nowadays is very dry cut and uh, starts looking, everybody starts looking alike. Looking the same. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I really, it was a wonderful experience to show these within uh, the elements of Benoit's uh, inventory and, and gallery space. Mm -hmm. I think of things like the famous palm leaf print at the Beverly Hills Hotel, which has been copied like a thousand times and is ubiquitous now and doesn't seem to carry the same weight as some of these antique papers, which are so special. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to have any conversation nowadays without a mention of COVID-19, but I'm wondering what you all think about the emphasis on, on creating a calming, soothing environment indoors, if it's stronger than it's ever been before. Matthew, mm -hmm. you've recently bought this brand new swanky 1970s ranch as sort of a departure for you. How have you embraced nature when, when setting up a new home? It was it was a big it was a big departure because my previous house was a 1790 house in the village. Now I'm in a 1970 house in the woods, um, but it wasn't swanky when I bought it. Um, it's a um, I you know I, one of the reasons I bought it because it faces has the most beautiful view, and it's all glass on one side, and so it, I, you know, you have to acknowledge the view. I mean, there's no way around it, and that's and that's why I wanted it. Um, getting to your point about. Um, People wanting to, to soften up the tears. It, I found that it's 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 been a trend that's been happening, but now after COVID, it's happening even stronger. It's, you know, I love that Carol mentioned the word dry cut. Um, that's what they want to get away from. They, they you know, and 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 it's been nice because I've been getting right younger here. <laughs> exactly, and, and I've been getting nicer, a younger clients who are looking for very good antiques, um, and 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 that's been a, that's what, why I came into the industry. So I'm, I'm thrilled that they're doing this, that they want this because. I was missing it. I was just, you know, when you order as a designer, when you order this, this sofa again and the same table again, and the, you know what the interior is going to look like before it's done. When you're using antiques, it's always a surprise element, and it always takes you in different directions. And the the, the final product is so unique to that to the client and to yourself that that's what attracted me to the industry in the first place. So now I'm getting back to that stronger, and that's you know at this point in my career, it has to be about that. Mm -hmm. I know too that you're a, a photographer and have done a wonderful book of your photographs and Benoit was commenting earlier on your Instagram feed and particularly the, the landscape pictures of, of nature. I mean, are you finding that you're, you're documenting that sort of thing more than you used to in the past? Oh, oh definitely. Because I, you know, I had the time to do it, but, you know, before COVID I would come up to, um, to the house on the weekends and Friday nights and come back Sunday nights. Mm -hmm. and now I've had the, the time and the chance to really explore where I am and take advantage of this to changing seasons. I've never really watched the seasons change so slowly before. And, uh, and, that, and, and those sort of elements have always been in my work. You know, I was looking back and I was thinking that, you know, I've always incorporated um, various motifs, leaf motifs, flower motifs into all my fabrics, whether it was a, a tone on tone damask or, or very something more vibrant. It's always been something I've been attracted to. Mm -hmm. and, um, and even my carpet collection that you mentioned from Patterson Flynn, it was all best based on a sketchbook that I had, had from, um, I, I took a sketchbook to, to Dublin back 20 years ago and I drew the garden gates. I just had, I just took a day where I was gonna go look at metalwork and I, I walked around Dublin and I drew various um, metalwork around on, on buildings, but mostly in gardens and parks. And that's, that's my collection is all based on that. That's what it, it's all about, the garden. So it's, um, so and now I'm getting back to it more, and I think my clients are also relating to it more. Yeah, wonderful. Um, the traditional decorator magazine advice used to be uh, with wallpapers, whether they were floral or, or not, to use them sparingly in a powder room, and you don't have to take a chance and buy so many rolls or whatever. But I think now we're seeing, you know, entire dining rooms and living rooms. So do you all feel that people are getting braver? What is what has caused this this shift? 
anyone can answer this. I, you know, I think they, I think they're getting braver. I think they're appreciating it more, and um, they're getting less afraid of pretty. You know, it, it, you know, they want lovely interiors now. That you know, that that, that stark, um, cold, dry cut um, interior is not so pleasing anymore. Mm -hmm. For most, for, for many people, um, not everybody, but. Um, so I'm finding it. I'm finding it's turned into a lot more fun for me because yeah. I've always wanted to go back to that. Carol, thoughts about that, particularly with antique papers? Are people more willing to use them? Well, I, you know, I treat them like a mural art form, like an mm -hmm. object, and no longer like wall coverings. Mm -hmm. And um, as I said, it's it's a very unique mural art form, not very well known by people at large. And so the, the the fun has been, and the stimulation for me has to be has been to reintroduce this art form, explain how uh, you know they they were part of interior decors originally in the 18th century, and followed right through the Art Deco period, because that's when they were hand woodblock printing them, and well known designers were doing the drawings. Uh, I don't know if, if you know, but Ruhlman, for instance, started his career designing wallpaper, not furniture. Mm -hmm. And so um, it, it's, it's, it's the challenge for me is to have people look at these papers with a different eye. And all of these vintage papers, as I said, from the 18th century through the Art Deco period up until World War II, were hand wood black printed, were done by fine designers. And so there is a quality in them, in the, the finesse in the engraving. There's a density and relief on the surface because of the process of woodblock printing over again for different color passages and details, et cetera. So you don't have a flat surface. And that has nothing to do with what's being made as wallpaper in the industry. And that's where you have to explain to people, but they they give they give off um, a certain um, there's a presence to them, and so people who have sensibility uh, capture that. And oftentimes I'm asked, "Who are your clients?" And I say, "Well, they're people from all over America, Europe, uh, all over, um, and of all ages." But the only elements, um, characteristics that I could give would be they are people who have eclectic tastes and a certain sophistication. Mm -hmm. That's it. And who understand what it is and how they can mix them, which is really the exciting part, mm -hmm. with all sorts of art forms of all times. If you, if you treat it like, like you would a painting or, uh, or a drawing, so that's, you know, that's the, my approach. Mm -hmm. um, Benoit, we are, um, as you know, preparing a little article on you for our March issue, and which you reported that you grew up antiquing with your mother in your small village an hour outside of Paris. And I'm just wondering if you can tell us about what drew you up to antiques and, and garden and nature motifs in, in general, what grabbed your imagination? Um, well, I think, you know, this is the way that uh, at home we would never, uh, we would never go to a furniture store to buy mm -hmm. a set of chairs. That's, uh, okay. you know, you would go to a little nearby village where you had like three or four antique dealers, um, most of them friends of my mother. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and they were always, uh, when I was very young, I was seven, eight, ten, uh, I would start collection of everything. So that was... Um, uh little it started you haven't changed. Toys. sorry you haven't changed <laughs> <laughs> no yes absolutely <laughs> uh, it was uh, dinky toys it was a little advertising uh, bottle that you would find on bars um uh it was certain books uh les editions herzel um it was the the, the quest and always and it's still the case actually today of learning something different. Uh, for example, this morning we were bidding in, in England and uh, last night as I was reviewing uh, the, the, the lot number that I wanted to bid on, I came across a couple of pieces that I had not really, uh, that I was not familiar with. Uh, and, uh, and that led to a couple of uh, internet research and then finding out that oh, the work of that designer is quite similar to uh, the work of Mahal and oh that's interesting 
and um, and so now that's a new um, you know a new departure. Uh, now I'm going to be obsessed for a while and then try to gather a little collection of that uh, designer, uh, who I don't really know much about. But uh, <laughs> we got a few pieces, so that's the beginning of a new uh, a new direction. That's the exciting part, I think. It's uh, that there is always something new to learn. Uh, you know, it's never. Uh, it's never, um, it's, it's always, there is always something that you, you are unaware of that leads you to st another path. Um, and, um, and so it's a, it's a permanent quest. Uh, um, and it's plenty of, uh, just like the wallpaper take you uh, here and there, um, it's every time it's, uh, there is some excitement about a new discovery or, um, you know, so nothing yeah. has changed. <laughs> um, I know that you've carried lots of contemporary pieces too that with, with nature motifs, like the show you did with Frank Avenue, the mushroom stools and the cast bronze nesting tables in, in the shape of tarot root leaves. Um, and I love the work of Matthew Solomon, whom we featured in the magazine. Uh, these extravagant ceramic flowers and the tulipiers that look like sort of the, the Dutch predecessors on steroids. What, why, why carry these pieces and what, make, what makes these nod to the past while still being modern? Um, you know, the, for the Matthew Solomon, uh, uh, Matthew uh, actually worked and lived in, uh, upstate New York, not mm -hmm. very far from where I live. And for several years, I would, uh, he had a little tiny little uh, store that was always closed, but it was a little window onto his work. And, uh, and every weekend, one of the goal was to one day try to meet the artist. And uh, it was for my 40th birthday um, that uh, my partner at the time offered me the choice between three vases by Matthew. He had done the homework I had not done. And uh, so we met with the artist and uh, I had to choose between those three beautiful vessels. Uh, but on the corner of my eyes, there were that beautiful big tower, uh, that tulipier, mm -hmm. uh, that really uh, was obsessing me. Uh, so I took home one of the vases, very happy, uh, but not being able to forget about that big tulipier. Mm -hmm. And uh, which is actually a very uh, it's a very traditional building. It's a perfect tower, basically, uh, that uh, Mother Nature takes over. And that's explained the foliage and the fact that uh, sometimes you have to, you just see the, the, uh, a draft of the, of, the, of the tower. And um, when I, a few weeks later, when I contacted Matthew and I said, you know, what about that tulipier that I kept seeing in the corner of my eyes uh, in the corner there? Well, the tulipier was on hold. It was most likely to be sold to a client. And, uh, and so I was really, really disappointed. It just happened that the tulipier did not sell. And three months later, he called me and said, hey, this is available. So we work on the layout plan at the time. <laughs> and uh, the tulipier is still with me. Um, it's, um, um, I'll, you know, What's really fabulous with Matthew is that he will embrace uh, any new challenge. So when, for example, uh, uh, Joe of Fox Nehem uh, one day approached me and said, I'm envisioning a trace of, uh, of branches, porcelain branches onto the ceiling of that big dining room for a beautiful townhouse he was renovating uh, for a young couple, uh, Matthew was on board. Uh, the result was six months of his time. He refused to take any assistance and 157 branches uh, were done. And I think we acquired 200 pizza boxes at the time. So every branch would be traveling in its own pizza box uh, safely. Um, and the result is absolutely stunning. I think it was published at some point. Um, and uh, now we would know better because it was much more work than Matthew ever envisioned. But, you know, um, the, the exciting part with the contemporary is that when you get uh, some designers like uh, Joe or like Christine van Doesen that will push the envelope and that will ask um, uh, something that we, you know, out of the secure zone and then to have the artists and the gallery to be able to respond and to embrace the challenge, that's when it really becomes very, um, very fun. Right.
Did you, for the winter show, did, did you and Carol go about choosing the pieces you wanted to include differently? Did you take into consideration that it was virtual or how were those decisions made? Well, due to COVID, um, um, I felt like I wanted to take people on a trip. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we had this beautiful panel from the Normandy, the SS Normandy, which was like the, 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 the most luxurious uh, boat, I think, ever uh, designed, uh, ocean liner ever designed. Um, it was launched in 1934. Um, and um, so, and we also had a pair of uh, sofa from, uh, which are nearly, I think, 15 or 16 feet long from the Grand Salon of the Normandy, which was the most luxurious room uh, aboard the ship. Uh, so um, we- a floral tapestry on it. Absolutely, wow. the original floral tapestry. So uh, <laughs> the idea was to take you on a, on a journey. Uh, so we did try to basically gather the collection of things that would, that would uh, take you on that journey. Um, and Carol, how about you? Well, I, I have to say that I, I, I think the factor that uh, influenced me was to try to show things that were, that were strong in terms of colors or because to me, it wasn't that subtle as, you know, putting together a stand where people walk in and where I usually like to create an ambiance as though they're walking into my living room or something like that. And uh, I, I didn't feel there was any way that I could try to recreate that in this context. So I just went for for panels that I felt were strong, and you know I tried to to put them together so they would not fight each other too much. It was it was not easy putting that together. It really wasn't. I'm so used to having a physical space in which you know I sort of vibrate and and get a sense and feeling for the kind of ambiance that you want to create. There, it's very different. Yeah. Yeah, and people have responded nonetheless so far. So we'll see. As I said, it's a totally other experience. Yeah. Um, and moving on to our last rat. Well, first of all, have you all seen the whole show? Have you gone through no. all the dealers or? No, I haven't. I still have to go through uh, quite a few. <laughs> well, I said. I I have, all of a sudden, I'm looking at things I would never look at <laughs> <laughs> because I have the time, and, right. uh, and so it's. Um, but again, it's 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 the same. It's it's always a discovery of something new, right? Something that you're not necessarily, uh, <clears throat> you know, would think that could be of interest. Mm. Well, I had asked in advance because I, I wanted it to be fair, but I was going to ask each of you what is your favorite piece in the show and why. So. If, if you want to choose something from your own booth, that, that's fine. But well, Matthew, why don't we start with you? I think you've done a pretty, pretty comprehensive walk, so to speak. Uh, um, there was a Greek marble plate from the fourth century BC. I can't remember the dealer now, but I, I, I just, it was so beautiful, it said simplicity. And um, that was probably my favorite. But when we talk about going, going into other booths and looking at things um, that you wouldn't, wouldn't normally see, I was, um, at the DDA, DDA in London, they have a bracelet by Vazarelli, and, and I, I would never have thought about looking at something like that as, as an object, especially during the show. And it, so things like that it popped up. And um, you know, I, I found the whole experience very interesting. And what's nice for as a designer is that you know the young clients they're very used to looking at things online. That's, that doesn't that doesn't phase them. They use us to promise them that it's going to be right. So. So in a, in a way, this might work out in our in, in our favor, and, and as long as you know we trust the dealer, and um, so the whole thing's been it's been it, I've enjoyed it, and I've passed on some photographs, and we'll see what happens. And Carol, how about you? Well, I have to admit that I haven't walked around mm -hmm. uh, to see the other stands, which I will be doing. Uh, so I have to pick one piece from my selection. And I, the, my favorite would be the Paul Fuller screen mm -hmm. because um, it, it, I think it's, it's a wonderful, um, it's a combination because the screen is a Japan, Art Deco Japanese screen that I bought 20 years ago. 
and uh, it was only the bottom which was enameled, which sur had survived. And I thought one day I will find the right wallpaper to mount on this screen. And um, about a, a year or so ago, I, I acquired rolls of portfolio wallpaper that had never been hung. And the colors and all were just so right. And I thought, this is it. And it was just a, such a wonderful marriage. And it's as though the screen had been waiting for this paper. Yeah. So it's quite special. It was kismet, it sounds like. Um, and Benoit, how about you? Um, there is, uh, uh, I've, I've not done <clears throat> enough of my homework uh, to, to really be fair to uh, everyone, but uh, one, one piece that I really, really like is um, a coffee pot uh, attributed to Philly Tin Shop and with the most beautiful and vibrant uh, um, uh, colors. Mm. Uh, it's just, it's amazing. Um, it's very, it's almost like Fovis in some ways, uh, but it's very bright and uh, and kind of very primitive in the same in the same time. Uh, that's one of the pieces that really uh, moved me. But um, give me a few more hours, and I'll have more. <laughs> <laughs> the real paper, uh, again, when I also go around <laughs> with, the, uh, with the Inca scene that uh, that Carol and I uh, displayed a few years ago. Um, it's a beautiful. Uh, it's not too big of a fragment uh, uh, of this uh, Inca uh, in that jungle. Uh, and that's a piece that I still, I keep, I keep loving. Um, Should wind up with you. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the screen that Carol uh, described is one of my ultimate favorites. Yeah. It is absolutely stunning. Beautiful. Yeah. That could come to Carol. <laughs> yeah. I could do right here on, on Zoom. <laughs> Um, well, the good thing is that there's still time to walk the show at, at any time of the day that you want for the next few days. So um, I hope that you all enjoy it. And I thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's been very educational and uh, have a good rest of the show. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for stimulating us. <laughs> thank you all. Bye, everybody. Bye. Say hello to Jean, Matthew. Right now. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Au revoir.